Hi, everyone, and welcome to 40 Method, the 40 in Wakanda user group. Uh, this is the March 1st, 2017 meeting. Um, on our agenda today, we'll talk a little bit about 40 Method. We'll get some news uh, about 40 from Jim Sobchak and Brian Young. Uh, we'll get Wakanda news from Ricardo Mello. Uh, we'll get the 40 iNug E Digest from Ed Hammond. Uh, I'll do a segment called Hey 4D. And then we'll move on to our special topic, building services with 4D Mobile from Alex Heilman in Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, we'll have general questions and answers, and we'll talk about our next meeting. Uh, again, welcome. My name is Brent Raymond. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the 4D Method, 4D and Wakanda user group. Uh, we, our website is 4dmethod.com, and we can be reached at 4dmethod at gmail.com. Uh, we get together uh, every six weeks or so, six weeks to two months, uh, to bring together a scattered community of developers and users. Uh, we stream the meetings via YouTube Live to allow people to participate from anywhere, anywhere in the world. Uh, we record all of the meetings and presentations to be viewed again or shared with others. Uh, and we are getting uh, quite a library of these uh, meetings and demos uh, that are available on our YouTube channel. And we are attempting to provide fresh new content and expo exposure for users and developers everywhere. Um, so to begin with, uh, just a little bit of uh, 40 method news. Uh, I posted a demo called print selection question uh, mark, another, another demo video in, uh, in a series I'm calling the no harassment zone. Um, in this one, we talk about uh, some optimization for printing processes. But what's really interesting in the, uh, in the demo is exploring the client log recording database parameter. Uh, you can access it through the YouTube link there. Um, but it's, uh, it's really a, a powerful way to, a uh, powerful new feature in 4D to be able to log all calls from client machines to the server. And, uh, and it really gives you some insight into what kind of traffic is being created by individual processes in, uh, in your application. So check it out and check out some of the other uh, uh, demo videos out there. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, submit some ideas for other demos or even submit your own demos uh, to link to on the site. Um, another... Uh, Next couple of announcements are very exciting. Uh, one, uh, I thought about it long and hard, and I decided that I want to keep 40 Method alive for the community forever and ever and ever, and uh, to keep making it better along the way. And that leads to number two. I could really use your help with number one. And now there's a way. 40 Method is finally on Patreon. If you care to, head over there and maybe throw a buck or two our way each month to support the group. It'll really help us keep pushing 40 Method forward. Uh, also, there are some pretty sweet rewards uh, that are listed on the Patreon page. But mostly, thanks for joining the meetings and commenting on the demos. That's incredible support uh, all by itself. Um, next, we have uh, some news from 4D. Uh, Jim Sobchak, uh, I'm going to hand it over to you guys. Great. Thank you, Brent. Yep. Hopefully, everyone can hear me. Uh, welcome from the 4D offices in beautiful Silicon Valley. Um, hi there. Um, baseball spring training season has begun, and the San Francisco Giants are on a mission to displace the Chicago Cubs as the World Series champion. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, a great year here in the Bay Area in baseball. Uh, as always, our thanks to Brent and Ed uh, for organizing today's meeting and for inviting the 4D and Wakanda teams to participate. Uh, we're really looking forward to Alex's presentation on 4D Mobile. Um, as you may know, there are many 4D developers designing great applications with 4D Mobile, and each one seems to be very unique. So uh, we're really looking forward to seeing what Alex has done with uh, his application. Here in San Jose, we're really focused on World Tour 2017. I know both Brian and Brent will mention the World Tour, so I won't spend a lot of time on that. 
other than to say that we'll soon be embarking on a world tour of 38 cities on five continents. So we booked all the venues, of course, in each of the six U.S. cities. Uh, the first stop will be in Chicago. Uh, we will see Brent and Ed there, and um, Brent will actually have a role at our Chicago World Tour meeting, so that will be exciting. There will be a, a day two training in each of the six cities, which is slightly different than we did on the World Tour in 2015. And uh, just to remind you, the purpose of the World Tour is to reach out to customers, 40 customers that we don't normally see, either at the summit or in face-to-face -face meetings. So it's really exciting for us to see um, developers that we no don't normally see. There's a crossover, of course, between summit attendees and World Tour, and we, we welcome that for sure. Uh, day two training uh, is gonna be super valuable for all 40 developers, uh, JP and JPR and ADD have uh, put a lot of time into this training session. Um, if you make your living doing 4D developing, this is gonna be a training you won't wanna miss. Uh, with, with both V16 out and with this uh, training, you'll be well on your way to building some great applications. Um, World Tour 2015, we visited 19 countries, 40 cities. We met more than 1,000 customers, and we trained hundreds of those customers. So in 2017, we're really hoping to improve on those numbers. Uh, we have a new a new member of our local 40 team, and he will also be on the World Tour team. Uh, I'd like to welcome Will Taylor, who is a new uh, technical account manager at 40 Incorporated. Will has been working at 40 France for the past five months, and we're putting him to work right away by sending him on the road. <laughs> so we're looking forward to to a few time a few days on the road with Will. Um, as far as uh, current releases, of course, V16 has been released. It's been out since January 10th. Uh, we're seeing sales of V16 uh, go extremely well, uh, fewer and fewer sales of V15, and just more people buying V16 right out of the gate, uh, which is very unusual for 40 developers, and uh, typically our 40 developers will wait for a .1 or a .2 release, but now we're going right to V16 right away, and that has a lot to do, of course, with the, our development cycle with the uh, R releases. So uh, that's a very uh, exciting trend for us to see people jumping on new releases right away. And if you want to see the features in V16, blog.40.com, of, of course, is the place to go. The R2 beta program, which will be the next release of V16, started the day after we released uh, V16. And we hope that all 40 partners and those customers on maintenance uh, will download R2, take it for a test run. Uh, we really need your feedback on R2. And if we're going to make it a successful beta, uh, we need to see how, how things are going for your applications. And we're still developing V15, of course, and we just released V15.4 hotfix one uh, yesterday. So for you uh, customers who are still on V15. Final reminder, and I do this every week, uh, at the uh, every month in these meetings, uh, the solutions page at uh, 40.com. Uh, find a developer near you. If you are a 40 developer and you're looking for referrals, it's critical that you update your profile. Uh, your profile from the previous solutions page did not carry over. So unless you've gone there in the last few months and updated your profile, when customers looking for a new developer or looking to rejuvenate a, an old 40 application are looking for someone to work on it, if you're not there on the solutions page, they're not going to find you. So um, please do that as soon as you can. Just go to Partner Central, update your profile, and all that new, new information will show up on the uh, solutions page. And that's it for me. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for covering the, uh, the news there. Uh, again, here are the dates uh, for the 40 World Tour uh, here in the U.S. Uh, they'll be coming to Chicago and Boston and, and Raleigh, North Carolina in April and Denver and Long Beach and San Jose in May. Uh, I, for one, and, uh, am definitely looking forward to attending the uh, the tour in Chicago. Uh, last one we went to was really spectacular with the, uh, especially the second day with the training. I mean, it's, um, it's, uh, it's summit worthy kind of training, uh, for the whole day. Uh, so if, if you're looking to uh, bone up on your skills or, uh, just, uh, just to even see some of the local de developers, um, it's a great place to go. Uh, and also if you'll be joining the, uh, <clears throat> the tour stop in Chicago, uh, I'll be uh, uh, demoing a little 40 mobile, 40 in Wakanda uh, project that, that I've been working with uh, uh, 4D on. 
through their their services. Uh, specifically, Xiang Lu and uh, Ricardo Mello have been uh, working with us closely on this in order to put a web front end on our uh, our 4D server client uh, legacy application that, that we run here at the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, so <clears throat> it'll be really neat. I'll share some of the, uh, the approaches that we've taken uh, for doing that, and, uh, and we'll take a look at how the application works and, and uh, discuss a few ideas for uh, what we're looking, how we're looking to expand that, and, uh, and also about uh, how to go about working with 4D on their services with their services end. Um, again, as Jim mentioned, uh, 4D V16 is, is live. It's, it's actually a, a really great build. And also, uh, I'm, I'm just I'm jumping out ahead of the gun a little bit here uh, to talk about R2 because that's not even available uh, yet unless you're using the, uh, the beta nightly builds of it, uh, which I have been, and I really like it. Uh, and I just wanted to go ahead and talk about some of the new features that they've added into it because they are immediately uh, uh, useful if you are taking it, especially if you are taking advantage of uh, object fields and, and, and starting to take a, a more unstructured 4D structure uh, approach to your data. Um, so getting to some of the new features, uh, just quickly, a uh, new timestamp command uh, that does the, the native ISO 8601 Sure, it has some kind of a, a nicer acronym than that, but it's the standard uh, Unix timestamp. Uh, well, that's now uh, native, uh, available through a native command in 4D, and there was always all, all kinds of tech tips and how you could roll your own way to uh, get from from nothing to that timestamp. Well, now it's in there, and, and uh, that'll simplify a lot of your development and uh, interaction with other systems. Um, with R2, you can now search by linking array attribute query arguments. Now, if you haven't done too much, uh, too many objects in your structure yet, this, this might sound kind of weird, but uh, it, it's necessary and very powerful to be able to, uh, to have different sets of linked query, grouped query arguments. Uh, if you have uh, arrays in your object fields. Um, so anyways, it's a, if you get out there and take a look at it and start exploring uh, that approach to 4D development, I think you'll really dig it, as I do. Um, they, the, the product line uh, on Windows is now finalized for 64-bit. Uh, you can now also sort records by object attributes, which is, again, important uh, from what I talked about with the linked array attribute query arguments. Um, there is now, uh, they've integrated a new rendering engine for uh, the web areas using Blink. What that gets for you is uh, internally runs multi, in a multi-process format, uh, better HTML conformance, and it will now uh, better match how it appears uh, between Mac and Windows platforms. Um, also, uh, with R2, there's the the new enterprise feature, uh, support of virtual machine snapshots. I mean, who's not doing virtualization out there now? Uh, so this is this is a big addition. Um, you can customize the highlight color of a list box row selection. That's pretty nice. Uh, it has a brand new cache manager, uh, which uh, optimizes handling of of. 4D objects and cache me memory to uh, avoid fragmentation, which is great, again. And uh, an improvement of a uh, find and design dialogue, which we'll uh, talk about again later in the meeting. So sorry for going on and on about it, but I think uh, R2 is is a really great, is going to be a really great release for 4D, and and uh, and I've, I've jumped on the, uh, the nightly build bandwagon myself, uh, so that's a... Uh, that's a good way to go so that you can help drive uh, the, uh, the uh, quality assurance and, uh, and new feature development with 4D. Um, again, as Jim mentioned, 15.4 is released, uh, which if you're planning on uh, sticking to 15 for a little while, uh, that buys you uh, on Mac uh, Sierra 10.12 certification and also uh, the Windows Server 
2016 certification as well as bug fixes. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, it, the OSs continue on their march of releasing whether or not any of us like it or not. <laughs> so uh, we we all have to stay uh, certified for those platforms. And so that's a that's a good release for 15, obviously. So kicking it back to Ricardo Mel. Hello, uh, to get some Wakanda news. Uh, I'll just uh, pass the baton to you, Ricardo. Sounds great. Hello, everybody. Um, hello to Will. That starts in our office. Uh, that's great to hear, uh, to see a new face. Um, I just wanted to correct one thing, because the kudos and the whole effort done to the project that the Institute Art of Chicago is doing is mainly Shang. I, I, am, I am on the side on that. He has been fantastic uh, um, uh, on the process. So let's jump to some news in the Wakanda world. Um, first one is um, our sales. So we closed the last year. We grew from the past year more than 800%, which is fantastic in, in, our, in, our, in our world right now. Uh, we plan it to double this year. And so far, we're in the second month, and we are keeping up the pace. So we're pretty happy about that. So lots of projects coming, and uh, including some IoT, which is quite exciting. It's something new, and uh, connecting some devices uh, is something that we are excited to have Wakanda um, um, uh, on it. Um, on continuing the news, we're going to keep up the sales also with participating with the biggest event for Angular, as you know. Um, the front end right now, it is open to other frameworks. We have a more consistent work with Angular 2. It works with other frameworks as well as Aurelia. We are working uh, with React as well, some clients. But we are mainly focused on Angular. And for the Angular, there's nothing big than the uh, ng-conf, which is, happens in Salt Lake City. We'll, we'll be there. We'll be one of the biggest sponsors this year. So we're pretty excited about that. Probably there's a talk, and uh, um, if you if you are uh, wondering if you should go, go. It's really interesting conference. You have all the new things, and Angular two is picking up even more. So I strongly recommend you to 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 go. But before, and we hope it's going to be released before, we have the version 2.0 of Wakanda, and it's a major release for us. Uh, it will bring many changes in terms of how the special the studio works. Um, it's going to use Blink as the same thing as 4D as well. But also, it's going to change the flow. It's going to increase the possibilities that we what you can do with the studio, especially in terms of code editing. We are implementing a, a, a web editor in our uh, um, in the studio. Um, it's going to have uh, possibilities to create Angular structures um, as you have in the Angular um, uh, CLI or the command line. Um, very powerful, so you can create components, you can create services all through the studio. Um, very nice, all integrated. Um, and uh, you're going to, we're going to have the concept of the multi data, right? So um, in terms of the server, what you have to, uh, um, in terms of chains are we're bringing the concept of virtual data class, which can pretty much hook any API out there to classes in Wakanda. Um, that's going to be pretty exciting. We are preparing some demos for that. Uh, we have some projects with the, the government, uh, the French government, for example. We map their whole API for the tax systems, so you can see their API as data classes. So we, have, we provide a way now that people can um, uh, map an, a an external API straight to Wakanda. Um, um, also, we have the concept of the multi-data, which is like uh, in the past, if you have multiple sources of your data, you would have multiple views of your data as well. So in the studio, you, you would have, if you have like a MySQL database and the Wakanda database, each one of those would be a separate entity in the studio. So you would have to, you would open the model for that particular database. Now it's going to be all integrated, so you can see all at once. We are heating up the concept ever more present for us that data is coming from everywhere in these um, internet uh, uh, times. 
Um, and to just finish, I uh, yesterday I released something in GitHub, and I want to show you guys as a as a uh, an appetizer um, because I think uh, a lot of you, a lot of you guys that wants to start with Angular, sometimes they have a little bit of difficulty and have an example that is kind of nice kind of nice um, helps. Um, not a complete example, but it's, it's just to show the power of um, having all the elements that Angular provide, including with Angular Material, which is the CSS provided uh, um, uh, 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 with Angular. So how can I share the screen here, Brent? Help me on that. Is in the uh, it's uh, on the left side of the browser. Uh, there is a uh, hover over the there's a green all right. Screen. Air button. So, whoa, can, can you guys? Go? Oops, can you guys see my screen? Uh, they should be able to momentarily. Yeah. Uh, yep. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to just show you uh, an appetizer. So in my in my GitHub repository, which is rmallow 4 d rmallow 4 d if you look for it, I have a seed Angular 2 material Wakanda. So what are seeds? So when you open the studio. And if you see the studio right now, if you try to, let me close this, and if I try to create a new solution, you're going to see that we propose, um, I can create mobile and I can create web. Let's say that I just, I want to just to create web. You can, we propose two seeds that are the basic seeds, but you can add seeds to your project very easily. So in this repository here, I explain to you how to create a seed. And then once you have a seed, and then in this case, it's going to implement a, a bunch of um, uh, uh, widgets and, uh, um, and visual elements on, on Angular for you. And once you have a seed, you can just hit the seed and create a project with that seed. And that could be something that has already your logging. It has already some of elements of your page. You can create like a, a, a snapshot of your, of your project and insert in Wakanda and use every single time. Okay. So I create the seed, so you have the instructions on how to, to, to add it. And then once you have it, you just click it. And then if you run the page, as you know, um, the Wakanda, the Wakanda um, uh, uh, process of installation will, will uh, bring um, uh, the, the node environment. And it will run uh, NPM to install all the libraries that you need, OK? And I hope very soon. <laughs> or I'll create one in the, from scratch. Actually, why don't I do that? Because, uh, yeah, there you go. So. The project loads up, so if you download the project here, okay, if you download this project here, install in the right place, it, it will be in your seeds you can create a project with, and once you have the project, it's a simple project, but in the menu, you have a bunch of things that you can see, like, for example, button, all the types of buttons that you can create with Angular and Angular Material, uh, what they call chips, what they call, that's a bunch of, um, uh, interesting uh, widgets. The chip was destroyed. Show select. So you have a bunch of nice um, uh, uh, elements that shows um, how Angular works on the back. That's it. It should be very simple. Just go to my page on, on GitHub, download that seed, uh, install in Wakanda. Next time that you kick a project, kick a project with the seed, and you have all the code source there to look how to implement all those elements. And then it's all about hooking the data. And if you need any help, don't hesitate. Send me a note, and I'll help you to connect your data. OK, that's all for me, Brent. OK, thanks so much. Uh, again, uh, there's Ricardo's uh, email address if you'd like to contact him about the, uh, the, the, the demo, uh, and we can also put up a link to his GitHub on the 40 Methods site so that, uh, that, that you can find that, uh, that demo a lot easier. Um, but wow, that, that looks really great. All those, uh, those widgets uh, uh, could very easily uh, get integrated uh, directly into people's projects. So I, I think that that'll certainly drive some interest. So thanks again for the, the news update. A lot going on with Wakanda. 
Uh, next, we have the 40 iNug E Digest from Ed Hammond from here at the uh, Art Institute. Uh, Ed? Thanks, Brent. Uh, okay, it's been about six weeks since uh, we did a digest. And uh, David Adams continues his tear into V16 uh, and uh, continues to relearn things that he's already forgotten. So uh, he posted a thread on how equals is not transitive. Uh, it only goes to show you that uh, we all forget things that the documentation can uh, oftentimes clear up for us. Um, and if you can't find a correct reference in the documentation, there are other people that may lead you to it, including Walt Nelson, Kirk Brooks, Jeremy French, who actually cited the documentation, uh, Chip Scheid, Dennis, uh, Neil Dennis, and Arnaud de Matard also uh, contributed to that conversation. Um, David continued with, what are people using inter-process communications for now? Uh, given that we have call form and call worker in V16, he was asking the, uh, the community, uh, what are you using inter-process communications for? And Olivier Fleury and Chip Scheid and Atwin Zildjian and Kirk Brooks all had their take on what they use uh, IP communications for. Um, I'm going to really butcher this name, so I'm just going to try it. Uh, Sanyasin Siddhanath Swami. That's a mouthful. That's a beer. Ooh, it probably. Um, was having problems converting a, a picture using convert picture. It was crashing 4D. And uh, as always, Miyako piped in with some options for him. Uh, Charles Miller, Miller, Nigel Greenlee, and Bruno Legay also had uh, good options. Uh, as well as Bernd Froelich and David Adams. Uh, then came a question from Kirk Brooks about storing data outside of the data file, which is uh, very interesting to us as uh, we have a whole system uh, for digital asset management that's going to go live shortly. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't built in 4D, but there are some great options built into 4D. Um, and Kirk, uh, along with Jody Bevan, uh, Randy Engel, Olivia Fleury, Maurice Inzirillo, and Peter Bozek all had various uh, strategies for accomplishing document management using the 4D tools, uh, including storing data outside of the data file and how that affects uh, transmission client server uh, across the wire. Um, Olivia Fleury also released a, a nice little type ahead component. So if you haven't implemented that in your systems and want to do so, he's got a component that does it very cleanly. Uh, Jeff Kane uh, said, hey, old doesn't work with object fields, which prompted a big discussion between Kirk Brooks, Cannon Smith, Arnaud de Montag, and David Adams on how to determine if 40 objects are equal and how objects differ from their JSON representations. And I'm sure that the, that sort of discussion will continue as people discover how to use objects in their apps. Um, David Adams continued with the age-old discussion of better variable names. Uh, lots of folks had uh, their take on it, uh, but he's complaining once again on restrictions on variable and method names. Um, use of naming conventions, and protected module namespaces or scope. Um, a lot of this includes a reference to a tech note that explains how to vote on feature requests. So if uh, feature requests are, are something that you want to participate in, read those tech notes in that thread. Uh, finally, Douglas Von Roeder had uh, some questions on virtualization. Yes or no, what's your take on it, what works for you? Uh, Wayne Stewart, Tom Benedict, Tim Nevels, and Chuck Miller piped in on that thread. And uh, as always, it, it appears that if you've got good people, knowledgeable people, and are willing to throw the right resources at it, you can probably make your solution work. Uh, for product announcements over the last few weeks, 
uh, Active 4D, uh, Aparajita Fishman, has been updating Active 4D to work with the newest versions of 4D. Uh, Kenneth Smith updated his object module. And uh, the people at Hoibach Media have released a new version of HM Barcode. So uh, these links will be up on the 4D Method website um, in the next so, day or so. So check those out if any of those uh, discussions are of interest to you. Remember, the, the Digest is a good place for um, sharing your problems and seeing if anybody else has solutions out there that may be up your alley. Uh, I also recommend that you check out the forums. There's a lot of good material there. Okay, Brent, back to you. Thanks, Ed. And uh, as Ed said, uh, between the forums and the iNug, if you can't find someone who's uh, already experienced your problem, uh, you, you will certainly find someone who would uh, discuss it with you. So there's a wealth of knowledge out there and uh, definitely worth checking it out. Or you could check out the digest uh, that Ed Hammond uh, uh, organizes at 4D Method. Um, our next segment, Hey 4D. Uh, so there's been some uh, new development in R2, 16 R2 on the new find and design interface and a couple of new capabilities with it. That's very nice. Uh, how about also being able to search by uh, who modified a method, or at least uh, what methods were modified in the last, say, so many days by somebody? Uh, that would that would make it easier for me to track Edgar <laughs> and anything else that's actually happening in the application. So, uh, as usual, it'd be a lot cooler if you did. Um, as Ed mentioned, uh, there is a there is a tech note uh, available uh, on the knowledge base on how to uh, suggest new functionalities to 4D uh, and uh, and how to vote on uh, the, those new suggestions, feature requests uh, on the forums. So check out these two links if you haven't done that, or if you have some some new ideas for 4D. Um, and moving on, uh, we have our uh, special topic presentation here uh, called Building Services with 4D Mobile. Uh, Alex Heilman joins us from Edinburgh, Scotland. Uh, he works at the Edinburgh Bicycle Cooperative. Um, he has an interesting background. Uh, a Frenchman living in Scotland has a Greek first name and a German surname. Uh, makes him a, a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside of an enigma, uh, perhaps. But he started working in IT six years ago, uh, doing technical support with Unix systems in Oracle. Uh, he, current, he currently holds a senior IT position at the cooperative as a uh, system admin and 4D slash web developer. How cool is that to work at a bike co-op and be able to do 4D in Wakanda? Well, we're about to find out. I'll hand it over to uh, Alex here, and uh, we'll see what he's up to. Right, can everybody hear me? I can, yep. Yeah, uh, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, um, so it's really the first time I've been in front of more than five people, uh, well, seven people <laughs> right now. Um, so I do apologize if I do feel a bit nervous, and I do hope I'm not going to rush uh, things through. Um, I'm pretty sure this topic is uh, is interesting enough for everybody, and I do hope it's going to entice more people to uh, come up online and show, and show off um, some work on that stuff. Uh, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. Uh, i got some slides uh, to the screen. No, not on that. What's going on? Mm. How do you? It's the uh, it's the, the, the famous demo, uh, <laughs> the curse of the demo here. Uh, maybe yeah, uh, we tried that before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's going on here? Same yeah. browser. Yeah. Okay. No, oh, fool! Oh my God. Um, is your presentation a black square? Oh, there we go. OK. OK, I just have to hide. Uh, OK, can you see? 
Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so what is the stuff? Um, Uh, looks like we lost him. I imagine he'll reconnect. Uh, just it's always uh, an adventure here with some of the uh, the demos. Uh, you know, it's it's not easy to coordinate uh, with everyone uh, around the world to make sure all the technical aspects go as planned. I assume we'll we'll see him pop on uh, again in a moment. Um, but if you uh, if you're uh, interested, uh, there's some very, very neat uh, uh, fact, frequently asked questions. I don't know, is that, is that the right way to say the acronym at this point? But, uh, yeah, yeah, say FAC. Yeah, the, uh, the, the cooperative has been around for 40 years. I think it's one of the, the first uh, bike cooperatives in, uh, in the UK. Um, certainly, I think it's among the oldest. Uh, if you if you work there for uh, for more than a year, then you are then you become uh, part of the cooperative cooperative's owners. So it's a really neat operation. Uh, you can check out their website to see uh, uh, what they're up to. I think they have uh, they say Edinburgh, but they've got uh, branches uh, in, in several different locations in the UK. So they're they're growing. Uh, they're a growing uh, group there. Yeah, I think uh, I think he might have pushed the wrong button. Hopefully, he's not uh, presenting currently <laughs> to uh, to himself. Um, let's uh, let's try and I'll shoot him a quick email um, to see if uh, he realizes what's going on. Uh, okay, Brent. While you're taking care of that, mm -hmm. I. Uh... I'll take this chance to make sure everybody has taken a look at the topics for the uh, World Tour Day 1 and Day 2. If you haven't had a chance, please go to the site. I, I really think the content we have this year is going to be um, uh, fantastic. I think last Roadshow, last World Tour, people really found that it was uh, a lot of great content and uh, I think we got to step up this year. So take a look at those topics including controlling the user experience, uh, making informative dashboards for your users and uh, open source integration um, with 4D, uh, geolocating and clustered location mapping and even extracting data out of existing PDFs your clients may give you. Um, do we have Alex back? Uh, not yet. I, I sent him an email. Uh, we're hoping that he uh, d realizes that uh, that he uh, that he's not presenting to the group currently. Would want him to have to do it twice. Um, uh, Tim has a question here. I can let him uh, ask. But he he was saying, uh, did I read correctly that the presentation I'm assuming on the world at the world tour is about facial recognition? Uh, we do have a presentation that does uh, show how to integrate facial recognition yeah. and, uh, and open open CV must be open CV. <laughs> it, it is open CV indeed, yeah. and uh, it's it. uh, ready to install and uh, put to use. Yeah, uh, and, and of course, V sixteen features will be shown off uh, to get give people a chance to uh, learn all the great new things that are in there firsthand from uh, our presenters. And uh, if you choose to come to the state of the art training on the second day, uh, we have much more about moving from uh, previous versions to take advantage of the latest features, uh, uh, moving from schema full to as JPR writes schema flex uh, data structures. Um, moving from static to dynamic variables, moving from numbers to names, 32-bit to 64-bit, and uh, of course from call process to call form. Lots of uh, new new uh, technology to take advantage of in the recent versions, and uh, the state-of-the-art training will really help you conceptually and practically on how to uh, start taking advantage of this. Yeah, those are, are going to be some great topics to discuss. Uh, I, for one, am very interested in the facial recognition. I was looking at uh, connecting, building OpenCV into our uh, system here at the museum in order to uh, recognize faces in the paintings. And uh, yeah, and, and then uh, you can also 
use that same library to uh, you know to to uh, to use your own face to see if if you appear in any of the paintings. So um, I'll definitely be uh, be interested in that. I can't wait to see that one. Yeah, yeah, I. I'm sure I'm in there somewhere. If I'm not, I should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, well, we're not having uh, we're not having too much luck here. Uh, we we've never uh, not been able to uh, continue with the uh, the presentation, but uh, um, you know, there's a first time for everything. Let's Somebody get cut, cut the cable optic fiber to Scotland. Right. Yeah. Uh, ho I, I can only assume uh, that an asteroid hit Scotland, <laughs> and uh, it just hasn't come on the news yet. So, um, but uh, it's either that or Godzilla. I, I don't know. But it's uh, we'll find out at some point, and uh, and and I hope he's okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, if, uh, if nothing else, uh, nobody wants to hear me blather on for a while. What we can do is, uh, is I, I have a question. Sure. It's a Wakanda question. Uh, um, I know that at the beginning of Wakanda, Wakanda studio, we had the widgets, which made it very nice to graphically lay out a web page and drag widgets around and you had all the functionality in the widgets. And then uh, as time went on, the widgets like all disappeared. And it's like, well, don't use our widgets. They're no good. You need to use, you know, like, you know, Angular or somebody else's widgets and frameworks. But then I heard today that are, the, are widgets coming back into the studio as kind of a graphical thing? Uh, okay, we uh, we went out and grabbed uh, Shang to help us uh, answer this. Go, go ahead, and, yeah, they can unmute that. So um, I'll sum up the question. Maybe you can repeat it if I get it wrong. But uh, the history of Wakanda, first we had the studio that included the widgets, and then we transitioned to a Angular uh, library, and the uh, widgets were um, – not recommended for use for production, but uh, for prototyping. And now, with the upcoming features that Ricardo just announced, we're talking about Angular widgets. Um, so, Tim, what, what was the specific question you had? Well, are, are it, so the the Angular widgets are going to be available graphically and integrated into Wakanda Studio, so they'll work kind of like the old widgets, where you could drag them and move them around, and and they're exposed all their properties and you know things that you can do with them. Is that the idea to bring them more in and kind of as a replacement for how the original Wakanda widgets were intended to be used? Uh, from what I know so far, I cannot say for sure, but from what I know so far, that is the intention. So to have a Angular widgets uh, you work like the Wakanda widgets used to work in the uh, studio, then you can drag and drop. But however, the data so data source framework we had before would be slightly different. So I'm not, I haven't seen that in action yet. But I believe that what you described is was uh, the attention of the Angular widgets in Wakanda Studio. Uh, the the idea being initially you got Wakanda, you started up Wakanda Studio. You could do the whole thing right from Wakanda Studio. You could build the database back in. You could build the web. Uh, site side, you can do all the coding, you could do everything from Wakanda Studio. But then when the widgets went away, you had to do more kind of outside of the studio, more just editing text files and building things up kind of manually, from what I understand. And that's going to kind of lessen, and you're going to go more back to Wakanda Studio can kind of handle the whole Wakanda project from beginning to end. Okay, uh, okay let me rephrase that. So, first, first of all, the, you can still do everything in Wakanda Studio. Wakanda Studio on the side, uh, other than the designer and the the, uh, the prototyper, is still a functional IDE and text editor. So you can still code in Wakanda. And the the, uh, the, the Wakanda framework we had before never actually uh, never actually uh, was not say stop you from uh, stop you uh, from coding. And actually, you still required it still requires you to write code like events, like the the way uh, you you handle the data in code. So that so there's there's uh so there's always two parts of the uh, of the fr in your front end. 
So the old way you do it in in the designer, you cannot do everything 100% in the designer with drag and drop and without coding, right? So the uh, the the new Angular widgets is uh, sort of uh, it's purposed. I, I I'm still I I uh, this is not an official answer from Ricardo. So I might what I'm saying might be a little bit uh, might be a little off or might change in when it's actually released. So the purpose of having this Angular widgets is to help you say uh, place your layouts. Say what you see. Have a have a have a layout of of your of your, uh, of your page and put the certain things in the in the places. Why you still have to code in the back of, of the logic where to get the data, how to serve the data to the front end. So that's a similar concept. So what we have now, we well, what we had with Angular Wakanda was during a transition period where you put, uh, you actually have to code your uh, template or view entirely in the in the code editor. So we're trying to ease the process with this with this Angular widget. Uh, if that's that what I'm saying is helpful, that's, that's, that's fantastic. That, that's, helpful. What's, that's what's needed. Yeah. To, to have that so that you're not back to let's open up and edit text files to do everything. You've mm -hmm. got some more graphical representation, like with the widgets. You had yeah. the property list over on the side. When you had a widget, you could click on a widget and you could set up a bunch of various properties. Now you could do all of that with code. You know, by just typing, but it was always nicer to see kind of a graphical look of here's all the things I can do and how I can configure this widget. Yeah, uh, and and that'll be coming when when Angular is more tightly integrated into Wakanda Studio. You'll have some of those capabilities back again. Right. Okay. Great. That's what I was asking. Good. Okay. Did it? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Good question, Tim. Thanks. Um, well, it. Uh, it looks like, in fact, uh, uh, he's having some trouble coming back. I've sent him a couple of emails. Of course, if he's anything like me, I turn off the uh, notifications while I'm doing a presentation. So, um, if nothing else, we can uh, we can just move on and wrap up and hope that he he stops me from uh, from finishing the meeting. Uh, and then we can add his presentation uh, on 40 method and in uh, on YouTube after the fact uh, for people to check out later. Um, right. So, questions? Where is our presenter? Um, the next meeting. Uh, you can always see the schedule for 40 method. Uh, under the schedule tab on our website, 40method.com slash schedule. Uh, the next meeting, we'll see the web file manager 4D, uh, which is a new remote file management code library uh, from Tom DeMeo uh, with uh, Waltham Software. Uh, sounds like a very interesting presentation. Uh, the, the library uh, is to be able to be to, to integrate a third-party uh, file management uh, library that you can you can make accessible through 40 web areas, which uh, which will allow you to uh, to manage files on uh, your 40 server or elsewhere. So it's a, a it's a it's a nice way to tie in uh, a third-party framework. Uh, for doing all those things through 40 web areas. Um, and if I said that wrong, uh, I expect he'll be able to correct me in, uh, in that demo. Um, at least I hope so. Um, and calling for other speakers who'd like to demo some of their work, uh, we have one additional date on the calendar currently that uh, we don't have a speaker for. That's May 24th. Um, we'll be posting uh, the, the dates for the rest of the year shortly. Um, but uh, if you've got something that, uh, that you think would be a, a nice thing to share with everyone or uh, just to show off your application that, that you use as, as a 4D or Wakanda user, um, definitely get in touch with us at 4D Method and we can get you on the schedule. Uh, excuse me, Bren? Yes. I do not want to discourage anybody from offering up an idea, uh, but I do want to uh, mention that uh, out of band we should talk. I have a possible presentation for you for that date. 
Okay, great. great. Um, well, I'm. Uh, uh, we should definitely talk about it. And uh, and as I mentioned, we uh, there will have plenty more meetings in the future uh, for for anyone that uh, would like to uh, have a bit more time to put together their presentation. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, wrap up. Other questions, discussion, feedback. Thanks, Tim, for uh, talking about the uh, the Wakanda widgets and the uh, as they call it now, I believe the prototyper. Uh, that was always a. Uh, uh, something interesting uh, for me uh, as, coming from the 4D world of uh, 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 coming to rely on a uh, wizzy uh kind of interface. Is that is that how you say it? Wizzy wig. Wizzy wig. Wizzy wig. Yep, yeah, that's uh, that's it. Uh, have to be careful uh, uh, the, with those acronyms. Um, but yeah, so uh, so well, you, you got to remember that. 4D was the first company to bring WYSIWYG database design to the world back in 1984-85 when 4D first came out. That was the first time you could build a database completely WYSIWYG, drawing things out, making forms, the structure, etc. Big deal. And now very commonly used. Then when Wakanda came out, oh, they're doing it again, except now they're going to do it for the whole darn web. We're going to have WYSIWYG web design, drawing and dragging and moving things around, positioning. And then when the widgets started becoming deprecated and 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 then we heard of Angular and other ways of having user interface, I thought, oh, no, it's back to text editors for everything again. How is this an improvement? Well, so it's, yeah. glad to see that it's shifting back to say, hey, let's use Angular as our widget platform and integrate that in which is probably a good idea. You can leverage all the work that Google's already done on Angular and just provide a nice interface to use that. So I'm looking forward. Are we going to have a presentation on this new Wakanda coming uh, soon, Jim? Um, hopefully. Um, not at the world tour. No, so I, I mean, we, yeah, yeah. On 40 method. 40 method. Yeah, well, I think Ricardo would love to do that. Yeah, Great. I, I'd love to see it too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's always been uh, uh, one of the main uh, benefits and uh, and powers of of working with 4D is, um, you know, that whole end of the, uh, the user interface work, which can get quite complicated, uh, uh, becomes really easy uh, or easier, and it allows uh, us as developers to to move more of our effort into. Uh, uh, the uh, business intelligence and making sure that we can uh, deliver a, a, a viable uh, solution uh, in a short amount of time to uh, to the stakeholders. So anyways, um, it looks like we're not going to get our uh, presenter back here. Uh, so we'll just have to uh, uh, keep an eye out for a, uh, a recorded demo on the uh, on the 40 method site and the, the YouTube channel. Um, sorry, everyone, for the technical complications. Again, I can only assume that a, uh, a pack of wild dogs has attacked <laughs> our presenter, and uh, um, and he's uh, currently busy with them. Um, but yeah, all joking aside, uh, um, we'll uh, we'll try and do this, uh, make this material again uh, available at uh, at some point. Right, uh, technology gremlins. They have attacked. You know, uh, we we need to uh, be sure. Do not pour water on them. Uh, technology or the gremlins, uh, both do not react well. So okay, all right. Well, sorry everyone. Uh, next time, uh, let's hope for for more luck. Uh, perhaps uh, we need to ask our presenters to have uh, uh, UPSs. Uh, power backups or something. I, I'm not sure what happened, but um, we'll uh, see you guys later and, and guys and gals and everyone uh, at the next meeting. Hey, Brent, one more um, one more um, item here from 4D. Um, while we were in this meeting, uh, we released uh, V16 Hotfix 1, and I just got the announcement about that. Of course, it's available on the forums. And just scrolling through the list, uh, it looks like there's about 80 bug fixes in Hotfix 1. So oh, for wow. those of you using V16, check out Hotfix 1 and uh, let us know what you think. And as always, thank you again, Brent and Ed, for organizing the meeting. And we look forward to seeing you in Chicago in just 
a few short weeks. Right, just around the corner. Looking forward to it as well. Okay, all right. Well, we'll see you next time. And thanks again to 4D and uh, and and Ricardo at uh, Wakanda uh, for uh, supporting the group. And uh, and thank you all for being involved. Uh, we'll we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.